Hey folks, I'm Saeed, the Coder Grammar, and in this video, we're gonna look at the JetBrains annual highlights of 2022. Now, JetBrains is a company that I'm very interested in. I use their products. I think they're a very developer-centric company. And in another video in the future, we'll take a much deeper look at the company, how it was set up, their history, and all that kind of interesting stuff. But for now, we're just gonna go through the highlights and just see what we make of them. Okay, so getting started, it looks like they've got some plans to expand and grow. Let's have a look at some numbers. So we've got 12.8 million developers using and trusting their tools. 12.8 million, that's a pretty big number for a software development product. There are 34 JetBrains tools. They have 25% year on year revenue growth, which is pretty incredible. I don't know how many years that's been going on for, whether it's 25% like almost every year or whether that's just year on year for this year. But either way, 25% is a lot. 92 Fortune Global Top 100 companies use their products. I'm surprised to be honest that it's not every single one of those companies. They're big companies. They must have pretty big IT departments. I'm sure somebody there is using IntelliJ or one of the other JetBrains products. They have 7,000 plus market place plugins, which is pretty impressive. I imagine that most of those are free and yeah, it's pretty good. I find that their marketplace is actually really good and a lot of the plugins are quite good quality. They don't tend to create a lot of problems in the IDE like a lot of the Eclipse plugins used to before I switched over from Eclipse to IntelliJ. They have 1900 plus team members across 10 offices and remote locations. So what's that 190 staff on average per location? I'm sure that's pretty concentrated in certain areas and some of them might be just sales and support offices. JetBrains today, as of 2021, they've got Got, and well, let's just go back and look. So they started with around seven employees fairly early on, 800 total customers. And let's have a look around here. They've jumped to 59,000 total customers, 182 staff, four offices, quite a few products by that point. 11 products. Somewhere around here, Kotlin came in as well. Yeah, so shown Kotlin as of 2012. Okay, let's fast forward to around here and you can see their recent growth, right? So it's like 0.3 million in the last, from 2020 to 2021. And they've grown in employee numbers from 1,500 to 1,900. Let's see if they've opened any new offices. Yeah, they've gone from nine offices to one more. Let's just have a look what that might be. Yeah, Shanghai is new. And we'll see later on that they've got a lot of growth in Asia. So that's kind of understandable. All right, their product set is like, like a pretty extensive set of products for developers now. They're probably all based on the same foundation, I should imagine. Fleet looks quite interesting, which is their Polyglot IDE that's not publicly available at the moment, but it's in some kind of closed developer preview. I'm not sure what Kodana is, but I'm interested to know. Let's just click on that. Kodana, code quality platform from your favorite CI. Okay, that's cool. So some kind of sonar cube type alternative. All right, so let's have a look at their team sizes. So the IntelliJ team is the biggest. That's probably their bread and butter. They've got quite a lot of people doing .NET stuff. Kotlin, 148 people working on on that space team city you track fleet fleet is new i'm surprised i've only got 37 people i should imagine fleet will have quite a big user base and should be quite a popular product once it's out jetbrains academy has only 21 people working on it wow that's amazing and the marketplace only 18 even though they've got 7,000 plugins on there and they've got 455 people working on projects research and supporting teams it's kind of a little bit vague but there's a lot of people working on that it's the second biggest team there and they have some additional people as well doing other bits and bobs okay let's move on they've got a lot of open positions i imagine there's a lot of developer positions so if you're interested i would apply it seems like a lot of these are location based so they're not remote c sharp java c sharp java kotlin machine learning scala all the usual complement of developer qa management ui ux all the kind of stuff you probably have in your developer companies okay that's fine all right location news we're not too interested in new company happenings looks like they look after people and they have some kind of health days and that kind of stuff uh, club members participants yeah so they care about your health <laughs> they care about their team's health JetBrains ninth annual hackathon given out 10 prizes twenty three thousand dollars. it's not that much in prize money 200 voters winning projects let's just have a quick gander at the winning projects five minutes to present okay graduate project so grazie is an intelligent spelling check spelling checker in 2022 there's still room for a spell check okay toolbox app space pages yeah pretty interesting stuff yeah, I'm sure some good things come out of these hackathons, otherwise they wouldn't do them. All right, let's move on. So JetBrains internships in 2021. I imagine it's a good place to get an internship. I'm quite surprised that out of 2,254 people applying, the 256 that got accepted, which is like just over 10%, I'm surprised only 73 of them went on to become employees. I would imagine that by the time they've been through the application process, they're probably quite good. And I'm surprised they don't go on to actually work there afterwards. But anyway, so if you're looking for an internship, that might be quite interesting. Okay, team interviews, if you're actually thinking 
thinking of working here is probably worth reading these. Customer highlights. So I think some of these we've already mentioned, 12.8 million developers use and trust our tools. I think that's a, a lot bigger number than I expected. And that's quite impressive. 3,271 new individuals become JetBrains customers every day. Now, I'm not sure when they say customers, do they include paid and community edition users? So I'm not sure about that. It's 14% higher than it was. So that's pretty good. About a 53% increase in organizations coming over to the JetBrains group of products. We've already mentioned this stat, so I won't go through that again. Total number of unique users, 12.8 million. So that's, yeah, that's pretty good. And let's just see a comparison. So for 2017, there were 5 million. So yeah, that's that's pretty good. Revenue growth by region. This one was quite interesting. So Asia Pacific has a, the highest growth rate, 29%. And Europe is growing faster than US, which, yeah, it doesn't surprise me too much. And most of that growth looks like it's come from China and Republic of Korea. And that's why, if you saw earlier, they had opened an office in Shanghai. So that kind of makes sense. US looks pretty flat there. Mainland China has bumped to second position in terms of active customers. Complementary. Yeah, see, when they're talking about customers, they talk about complementary and paying. It's a bit of a weird way of defining customers. It'd be interesting to see the actual split. I imagine a, a large chunk of those users are actually for the community edition, obviously. So that's pretty interesting. Spain's got quite a lot, 20%. So subscription and licensing updates, they've got information about JetBrains Academy. I've not really used the Academy, but it looks quite interesting. Code with me, I think I used on a previous project where we were collaborating. I'm interested to explore that more. I think that probably, they probably had a real push for that during the pandemic. Now with a lot of people working remotely, that's probably quite a priority. Okay. And they've got some other stuff here. I'm not entirely sure what data law is some kind of data mining or data exploration tool. It'd be interesting to look at that. Yeah, JetBrains gives some kind of startup discount for products, which I think is quite a good investment in the long run. I know that Azure Cloud offers some kind of credits and discounts and that kind of thing for startups. So that's pretty good. There's some interesting customer stories if you want to have a read of those, but we'll just skip those for now. Product highlights. They've got 34 products. They've got 7,000 plus plugins, which is pretty good. They've launched some fairly new products. So they've got Team City Cloud, which is a CI/CD kind of cloud offering for Team City, so it'd be quite interesting to check out. Yeah, they've got Data Spell now, which is a data exploratory IDE. So if you're doing a lot of data engineering, data mining, data analysis, that kind of thing, this might be worth checking out. They've got Kadana, which looks like it's some kind of sonar replacement code quality checking type tool. Okay, they've got Compose Multi-Platform, which is like a UI platform for Kotlin. So it might be worth checking that out if you're a Kotlin user. And it looks like it supports desktop, web, and Android. So that's quite interesting to have one platform to deal with all of those UIs. And they've got something called Compose Multi-Platform, which is a UI framework for Kotlin, but it supports different types of output to desktop, web, and Android. So if you're a Kotlin user, worth checking out. Fleet is something I'm particularly excited about. It's like a polyglot IDE. So it's, you know, JetBrains tools are usually targeted towards one language, but you can use them with other languages with various plugins. But this is designed from the ground up to be polyglot. And I think a lot of development environments nowadays are polyglot. So that's quite interesting. That's quite an interesting product. And I'm looking forward to that actually being publicly available. All right, so they're doing a lot of work around remote development where all the work is really carried out elsewhere. Now I've used AWS Workspaces and the experience wasn't very pleasurable. I'm sure this is different and will be a better experience. And I look forward to trying it out. If you've used it, let me know in the comments below whether you think any of this stuff is actually good and it's gonna catch on. And it's what we're all gonna be doing in a couple of years time. Now fastest growing products by paying users, which I think is much more interesting because that's where obviously their, their revenue comes from. And we've got Rider with 40% growth and that's their .NET ID. Data Grip and some these other ones are kind of mostly self -exposed. Explanatory. And then we've got Data Grip with 38% growth, all the way down to C Lion with 23% growth. But 40% growth is pretty incredible. So, so it looks like they've doubled down on selling to the .NET community, which is pretty impressive. Okay, Spotlight on Utrack. Utrack is their Jira alternative, I suppose. Yeah, so this is an interesting metric. 50% of the teams currently choosing Utrack are from industries other than software development. Now, I always think of JetBrains as one of the most software developer focused companies in the world. And so that's quite an interesting metric. It means that they can expand out and actually build their business and grow it outside of software development. Okay, let's have a look at the toolbox updates. So the JetBrains toolbox is like an app similar to one you get with Creative Cloud. It allows you to manage all of the apps that you've got and various other bits and bobs. It actually even looks like early versions of Creative Cloud. So if you use a lot of IntelliJ products, it's quite an interesting thing to have. They've got 1 million unique users for the app. It's actually been completely rewritten in Kotlin, but I won't go through all of this kind of stuff. You can just have a play with it and stuff, but there are some updates there too. All right, so let's move on to space from IntelliJ, which seems like kind of a, a catch-all space.
space where you can do everything in one place, all of your CI CD pipelines, your environments, your issues, documents, everything in one place. Okay. So let's just see if it's got any traction whether it's worth kind of looking into more. There's 44,000 plus organizations that joined in 2021, 6.5 million chat messages. To be honest, this metric is a bit of a strange one because chat messages, the count soon goes up very, very high, right? Any people saying hello is, is, is a chat message. So I'm not sure that metric counts for much. 330,000 issues, 95,000 code reviews. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's a, that's quite a useful metric. 65,000 documents and 46,000 repositories. So I'm not entirely sure what this competes with. Does this compete with GitHub or something? I'm not sure. If you use space, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise I'll take a deeper look into it at some point. Space and other JetBrains products leverage multi-platform benefits of Kotlin. Yeah, Kotlin is pushed kind of in all of these products. Marketplace and plugin development. So JetBrains Marketplace is a plugin ecosystem that hosts more than 7,000 extensions for JetBrains. Remember, you can make money making plugins. So if you've got an interesting plugin idea, you can make some money by building that plugin and putting it on the JetBrains Marketplace and selling it. But just be aware that a lot of them are actually free. So in this year, there's been 1,000 plus new plugins, 35,000 plugin updates. Total plugin downloads in 2021, 125 million. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive number. Yeah, that's like something around 10 plugins per user and 101,000 plus paid plugin licenses purchased. Yeah, that's not bad. So that means that if you're selling plugins on the marketplace, you can make a bit of money. There's 101,000, uh, more than 101,000 licenses purchased. All right. So here's a bit of blurb about what else has changed in the plugin marketplace. I won't go through that now. And some bump about how to get started. Education and learning. So JetBrains is a proud supporter of students, educators, professionals. They've got 1.5 million plus students, which is 15% up on last year. They've got 1.5 million plus users of JetBrains educational pack. We were given that for free, uh, which is pretty impressive. And I think if they've got that, they get the IDs for free or a heavy discount. You've got 87,000 plus teachers from academia who received that educational pack as well. And 761,000 students received a special 25% discount for JetBrains license renewal upon graduating. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it looks like they've been giving temporary free licenses to users of certain training courses and boot camps, which is pretty good. Okay, JetBrains Academy update. So, so this is JetBrains course offering and they run it off these kind of tracks. So you just go through step by step to get pretty well acquainted with any particular topic. So I think if you're looking to do courses, it's definitely worth checking it out. Some of them are free as well. So yeah, I think it'd be a good option to look into. I think JetBrains is, is a very well trusted company amongst developers. So yeah, it'd be worth, worth checking that out. I haven't actually taken any of the courses yet, but yeah, I'm not averse to it at some point. Right, let's jump to open source. So JetBrains is a supporter of open source software. So there are 6,000 plus open source projects that from the community that received 11,000 complimentary licenses for non-commercial open source development. So that's pretty good. Yeah, and it looks like JetBrainers or JetBrain developers have made code commits to 471 open source projects per month. So that's pretty good. You have 1,000 plus committers from the Apache Software Foundation and 75 Drupal core committers received licenses for their work on open source projects. I like to see companies supporting open source software projects since we all benefit from them. Okay, there's more here about their support for open source. We won't go through all of that now. JetBrains Mono added to Google Documents. Yeah, JetBrains Mono is a typeface, so if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, then this is an interesting addition. All right, now this is an interesting one. Kotlin turns 10. Now this was pretty shocking, really, because I kind of remember the early days of when Kotlin arrived and people were talking about it and the fact that it was supported by JetBrains give it a big push in the industry, and that's probably really helped it be successful. And it's also a nice programming language. I've had a little play with it. I quite like it. I'm not a heavy user, but I definitely quite like the language. But the fact that it turns 10 is absolutely terrifying. It feels like it was just a couple of years ago when it launched, but obviously not. It's been around for 10 years and it's used by more than 5 million developers around the world. I suspect it's used by a lot of Android developers, but yeah, it's used outside of Android development as well. And it's pretty nice language to learn. There's a whole video here about it. 11. JetBrains conceived the idea for a programming language that would make development more productive and enjoyable. Today, yeah, there's a 20 minute video there. I'm not going to play through the whole thing, but yeah, if you're interested, you can watch that video. It's interesting they mentioned 2011 because in the timeline above it showed as 2012, but maybe the idea was in 2011, but it kind of officially launched in 2012. So yeah, either way. Yeah, it's a very interesting thing that they've done anyway to launch a language and to actually make it successful. Obviously being JetBrains helps and having that kind of reach and the IDEs and all that kind of thing. It's now, as I said, got 5.3 million developers in 2021. Yeah, so it looks like they've been dog fooding it. 70% of their own developers use it for their work. 200 plus top universities have Kotlin in their courses and there's 40,000 Kotlin Slack members. I'm not on the Slack channel, maybe I should be, but I didn't know about it. So anyway, yeah, it looks like there's 40,000 
Kotlin Slack members. I didn't actually know, know about this Slack channel, so maybe I'll join that as well. All right, so let's look at the community stuff now. So JetBrains provided complimentary licenses for giveaways at both offline meetups and online events, virtual conferences, study jams, programming contents, programming contests, and live streams. All right, so user group support program. So 800 plus user groups from 87 countries around the world shared a total of 11,000 licenses. I wonder if that overlaps with the earlier 11,000 figure that we saw. Anyway, developer recognition program, 1,000 community experts received complimentary all products packs. That's pretty good. And the JetBrains community contributor program was launched and it's currently looks like it's focusing on .NET tools with more launches coming up and they sort of partner with educational content creators and streamers and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in joining that, drop them an email here. All right, so let's have a look at events. So online events and webinars, there's a total of 83 public webinars, 16,000 total number of live viewers, 3.3 million total minutes viewed. I'm not sure how useful that metric is. And they've got 16,000 total likes and they've got a number of dedicated YouTube channels. I didn't actually know about all of these. I'm subscribed to a few of these, but I didn't know about all of them. So I think if you've got any special interest, it's worth getting onto the right YouTube channels. And some of these are new. All right. And they've got some information about events here. Now, most of these events are in the past 2021, but you can see the recordings here. So these events are still pretty recent. So I think most of this information will still be very useful. So if you're interested, you can find that information here at the bottom of this page. And I'll include a link to this report in the description below. Yeah. So that pretty much concludes my review of the 2022 highlights from JetBrains. I think they're doing very well. They produce great products and there's obviously a huge demand for them. And I think they just grow as fast as they can make them. Now, as I said, I do plan to do a much deeper dive into JetBrains and how they work and all that kind of stuff. Maybe we'll interview some people from JetBrains. Let me know in the comments below what you think of these kind of updates. Let me know what you think of the latest products and let me know if there's anything in particular you want to know about JetBrains and I'll go and do some digging. Now, if you want to stay up to date with the latest information from the software development industry, tools, services, systems, companies, all that kind of stuff, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you found this useful, hit like because that lets the YouTube algorithm know that the video was useful. And thank you for watching.